Hey everyone, welcome to the Vintage Dreamer, episode number five. My name is Rebecca, also known as Becca Jan, and you can find out all my information on thevintagedreamer.com. It's so nice to finally be sitting down and doing a podcast. Goodness, it's been a while. Last since maybe summer. <laughs> my original goal starting the podcast was once a month and that's just with my lifestyle my busy lifestyle it's just not that easy for me so but i hope to do more this year hope to be better at it how was your january i can't believe it's february already time is really flying the older you get the more time seems to fly <laughs> uh, how was your january mine was pretty good uh we went to the ocean we came back did a lot of organizing my Christmas stuff is still not put away. It's down and it's near the boxes. I've just got to get them in the boxes and then put the boxes in the garage. So that, <laughs> that's what I need to do soon because I've procrastinated long enough. And then at the end of January was my birthday. I turned, should I tell you? I don't know. <laughs> I turned 39. So next year is going to be the big 4-0. What did you do if you when if you've if you've turned 40 what did you do for your 40th did you do anything special should i just pretend like it's not happening or should i go all out and do something really fun i don't know it's a year ahead so we'll see <laughs> and then coming up in a couple of days is my one year podcast anniversary which i've heard is called a podiversary <laughs> So that's really exciting. I was hoping to do a giveaway. I did not do much carving this month. I did, I'm working on a special order for someone and that's all the carving that I've gotten done. But after I finish that, I'm hoping to crank out all my carvings and have another shop opening. And I wanna make a prize giveaway. So be looking for it. I was hoping it would be in January, that didn't work out, so I'm not gonna make any promises now, but I'll just say coming soon will be a giveaway. I just have to make the giveaway prize. <laughs> okay, so let's get started on my works in progress. Okay, so the first thing I have is in this beautiful bag, and this is by The Knitted Soiree. Isn't that just so beautiful? I love their bags so much. They do a lot of polka dots and I love polka dots. They only have one size right now. I don't know if they'll expand. If they expand, I'll buy more bags from them. Right now I have, I have three. <laughs> I have three of their bags. Um, I have enough in this size. I don't do a ton of projects in this size at the same time. So I don't really need a ton more bags in this size. But, you know, they may tempt me depending on the fabric choice they do next. So, yeah. Okay, and in this is my simple beret. I call it my strawberry beret. Now this yarn is by Woolen Women Fibers and this was one of their mystery kits and this was I believe, yep here it is, it was their strawberry gnome and look have a little it came with a little strawberry gnome I believe I showed this in one of my videos when I went on a trip I was working on this and then I don't know if you say a cute little strawberry so sweet I don't have a ton of light outside today but hopefully it'll be good enough but yeah, isn't this gonna be adorable so it it was a sock set it came with a mini and then with this yarn here, let me show you what it looks like, caked up. Isn't that so pretty? Andrea does amazing color work, colors with all colors, but I really, really love her pinks. Her pinks and blues are my favorite that she does. Oh, and her browns and pretty much all the colors. <laughs> oh, you might be able to see it better if it's against the green. It's the cutest little gnome. 
So yeah, this is going to be a beret. And the pattern is Simple Beret by Hannah Fettig. And the Progress Keepers are by Sam's Tiny Trinkets. And let's see what... It's a little... It seems a little small. I don't want to put it on yet, but it seems a little small. But if it's too small, my daughter will, will love it and wear it happily, I'm sure. But I think if I aggressively block it, it should be okay. It just needs to like sit on top. So yeah. Okay. Next, next is my Sockhead Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. And look at this bag. It's one of my favorite bags. This bag is by Aggie's Bags. She has her really nice tags box bottom. I really like Aggie's bags and this is one of my favorites that she's ever done. Oh, I just love it so much. Okay, so this is the yarn I'm using for my slouch hat, my sock head hat, and this is how far I have on it. This is my, I need something to not think about. So this is my project I bring when I go to my parents' house and we're watching something together or car rides are really good. I don't have to think, I just, right now I'm at the Knit 2, yeah, the Knit 2 Pearl 2, and then after that it's just gonna be knit, 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 knit until you decrease it. The yarn is by Woolen Women Fibers, and the colorway is Boardwalk and Beaches. It's really pretty. It has, I don't know how many blue she has in there. It has a hint of yellow in there, just the slightest hint kind of warms it up a little bit so it adds a contrast of the cool and the warm blues but I don't know I think it's just lovely because I'm on small needles it won't let me stretch it out fully but it's so pretty and my charm is by Sam's Tiny Trinkets okay this is your unicorn this is unicorn poop now, if you ask my husband, he knows that I hate the poop emoji. Like, I hate the poop emoji. But there's just something about unicorn poop that I like. I don't know why, but it's, it's really fun. Next is my ribbed tweed gloves. And I have it in this bag by... I used to say Tanae Casey, but it's Tanae. So now, now I know how to say it. Tanai Casey. And I believe this is her small bag. And inside, okay, so one of my special yarny friends, one of my first yarny friends, bought me a uh, Woolen Women Outlander slash Highlander. <laughs> Advent, Winter Solstice Advent. And in it, at the very end, was this skein here, this full skein. So there was a whole bunch of minis, and then they had a full skein. And I decided to make gloves out of this full skein. And let's see. So here's the first glove. I still need to do the thumb. Here's one of the minis. And then here's the yarn, the main skein. This is a really neat pattern. This pattern is, it's called the lease. I'll put it, I'll write it down because so you can see what it, how it's spelled. But it's by Claudia Fromke and it's in the DK weight. Okay, so the pattern was, I don't remember. I think it was in, it was either in fingering or worsted but not DK, so I ended up having to change, change the count. So I did, I did the small version two, and then for DK weight, I cast on 44 stitches instead of the 52 that they said. So I cast on 44 stitches, and then when you divide up the needles, you're supposed to divide it into 14, 12, 14, 12. And I divided mine into 12, 10, 12, 10. So if you wanna make these gloves in DK, that's all you gotta do is cast, I mean, you know, depending on how tight you knit, of course, and how big your hand is. But for me, 
I did 44 stitches DK weight and then split out the needles into 12, 10, 12, 10. Now you're supposed to do it in double pointed, which is why it's split out that way. I'm doing it in circulars. So all I did was to remember the change in needle because when you get to the thumb gusset, it says on the second needle do this, on the first needle do that. So you need to know where your stitches would be located on the needle. So I put a marker to mark every, so I put a marker after 12 and then after 10 and then after 12 and I know the first section is needle one, the next section in between the markers is needle two and so on. So that's kind of how I got around the double pointed needles. Um, I like doing double pointed needles, but I really wanted to do circular for this. So I needed warm gloves that went high and my fingers get really cold and I do a lot of sketching outdoors and my fingertips get so cold. So this way I can keep my fingertips warm, but if I'm trying to draw, I can just fold this back like that. Doesn't that look good? And then I can I can draw, and then when I'm cold, I'm like, ooh, and I can snuggle my fingers in the in the tips here. So I just have the thumb. I really love how this gusset works out. I think it's a really good design. So yeah, and then I'm working on the next one. So now I'm working on the thumb gusset right here. It's getting bigger and bigger, and then I'll separate that. Um, yeah, all my rings. I have to put these sizers on my ring because one year I was decorating the Christmas tree and I lost a lot of weight and my rings were loose, which, and they still are. And I lost my wedding ring. We looked everywhere. My husband found it sitting right on a branch in the tree. Thank goodness he found it. And ever since then, I've been really scared <laughs> that I'm going to lose my ring. But I found these really neat ring sizers. They're like coiled plastic and you wrap it around your ring and it makes it more snug. So that's what's underneath there. I know it's not very pretty, but it keeps my ring safe <laughs> from getting lost. And look at this charm. Look at the little hat. I love that. <laughs> it's my favorite one out of the set. Anyway, so that's what I'm making with that yarn and I just it was so special that someone would buy me something so special you know someone I've never met but that we've become yarny friends oh it's just really sweet and really blessed me you know that it just did okay so okay my next work in progress is in this beautiful sister bag and this, my daughter calls this my runaway bag because in the cartoons, they have these bags like this and it's on a, the end of a stick and they, the one, the cartoon she watched, they were running away. Um, so she goes, is that your runaway bag? I'm like, no, honey. <laughs> but it opens like this and then it has this arm strap. So... You put it on your, you can put it on your arm and knit. And then if you want to make a basket out of it, you, you fold down these, this part like that, and then you fold, fold it over like that. There. And then you have a bag to knit out of. So this is by Beautiful Sister. I got this one, I got this one at Stitches West, but I got another one of theirs on their Etsy shop. And the style of the bag, it has a special name. The style is called, um, the style is the Heather bag on their Etsy. And that's by Beautiful Sister. Okay, so I decided to make another pair of gloves. And this is from my, uh, 24 day advent sock yarn by the cozy knitter and this was what using the leftover yarn and I was hoping to use all of it but I don't know I don't think I don't think I'm gonna make it <laughs> I don't have much farther to go 
I've just started the thumb gusset, so I think it'll go down a lot farther. But isn't that pretty? It's fun colors. It's colors I normally wouldn't choose on my own. So it makes it fun to try something new. And this charm is by Simply Serving. You can get it now. It's one of her Valentine's Day charms. But that's going to be fun. And the pattern is the Customizable Fingerless Gloves by June E. B. Designs. And the pattern's okay. I... The reason I'm here and I haven't started the thumb gusset is because it was a little confusing to me. Because it's customizable, there's many different way, things you can do and ways you can do it. So I just need to find time to sit down and read it all the way through and decide how I'm going to go about it. I, I have ADHD and with that I struggle with language comprehension and focusing. So sometimes when I'm reading a pattern I'll read it like five times and it just won't, it won't compute in my brain. Um, so I have to get in like the right circumstances. It has to be quiet. I have to be in the right brain space. And then, so I can focus and then read through and figure out what to do. And then once I figured it out, I'm good. But that's why I love visuals when it comes to patterns. When people say, go to this link and watch this video, that is so helpful. Because sometimes I'll read, especially The Gnomes by Sarah of Imagine Landscapes, I'll read it. And she does a great job of, of writing it out. But for my brain, I just have trouble visualizing what she's telling me to do. So her videos are very helpful. I love that about her patterns. And we're going to get to one of her patterns later. So yeah, this is going to be really pretty. If I have enough left over, which I might, I might make a pair for my daughter. She might like that. She has been wanting some gloves. Okay, well that is all of my whips. I have a lot of finished objects, so we better get cracking. So first, we'll start with my alpaca. And look how cute he is! He is adorable. This pattern is by Susan B. Anderson, and he is so cute. He actually came as a kit, which unfortunately is not available right now, but keep looking. Um, she may have another kit, but her kits come in these little bags. Now, normally I don't like kits because I feel like you spend more for what you get, but in this case, in order to make one of these, you'd have to buy a full skein of white, full skein of orange, a full skein of yellow, a full skein of the red. And you don't use much of the yellow and you don't use much of the orange and you don't use much of the red, quite frankly. Um, so that's one, two, three, four skeins of yarn you'd have to buy. Um, so it actually ended up being cheaper. Yeah, you get a little, you know, less yarn, but it, I felt like it's helpful. And she includes the embroidery and the safety eyes. And then it comes in this cute little bag. So I think her kits are worth it because you don't have to splurge on a full skein when you only need a little bit. Now, if you love the color like so much and you want a full skein, then it's worth doing it separately. Isn't it adorable? This, okay, I'll take it off. But this twists off like that and it wraps under like this, isn't that cute? So you just stretch it around and then give the pom-poms a little twist. And there you go, so cute. It was her alpaca kit by Barrett Wolko and the yarn is her home worsted weight and it was in picket fence, poppy, duckling and marmalade. The marmalade was the orange, the duckling of course was the yellow, and the poppy was the red, and picket fence was the cream. Okay, the next thing is for my January gnome of a year of knitted gnomes, and I believe I mentioned this in my last video, Sarah of Imagine Landscapes is doing a year-long knit-along called A Year of Gnomes, and you make one gnome per month, and it can be any size gnome as long as it's from her patterns. And so I'm gonna show you my January gnome. Okay, here he is. 
So I did a small gnome because that's really all I could do this month. And I this is one of my favorite patterns. And this is just a classic gnome. And the pattern is Never Not Gnoming by Imagine Landscapes. It's the bottom. The yarn is by Black Sheep Dye Works. And the colorway is the Deep Sea Tonal and Lettuce Tonal. And I have used this color before and I love it so much that I bought more. And I'm thinking of asking her if she can dye these colors in a worsted weight so I can make a big gnome. That would be so fun, but I haven't done that yet. But that's something I'd like to do, maybe for March. February, I'm gonna see if I can make a Valentine's Day gnome. I have a pink beard already made from Christmas time that I didn't use. And it made me think of strawberries and Valentine's Day, so we'll see how that goes. So that will be my February gnome. So that's my January gnome. Here's a small little color work project that I did. I did this around October because it was more of a Halloween themed and I carved these little ghosts. So I was kind of in like a trick or treat ghost kind of mood. I'm not a big like, I'm not a big Halloween fan. I don't really celebrate, I don't celebrate Halloween and I don't really do ghosts and witches and things like that, but I just have this soft spot for trick-or-treat ghosts. It reminds me of Charlie Brown. Um, and you know when you're a kid and you just want to pretend to be a ghost and you do the sheet and you want to cut the eyes out, but your mom won't let you and you just want to do what Charlie Brown did <laughs> with his trick-or-treat ghosts? That's what these ghosts remind me of. So this is just a little cup cozy. You could do a wrist warmer, I guess. <laughs> But the pattern is the Autumn Autumn Doodle Cup Cozy, and it's by Jamie Lomix. And I used Knit Picks Swish yarn, and the colors are black, white, and then all spice for the little pops of orange, amethyst for the deep purple and then Sugar Plum, which is the light purple. And that's actually retired, you can't get it anymore. I found an example of someone making a sweater with these two colors. And I decided from one of my, my ghost sweater that I'm doing, I don't believe I've shown you. No, I haven't. Oh, that would have been a good whip. Well, I'll show you at some point, but it's the same design and it's a color work sweater and when I was looking online at this type of yarn by Knit Picks, I was seeing different color combinations and someone did this light purple and dark purple and I found out that you can't get it anymore. So I searched in Ravelry and found someone who was willing to sell me a couple of skeins and she sold them to me. She was from my area actually and I got them and it was perfect, but she, because she used some of it, and she wound it up, she just felt bad about that. I don't know why, but she did. And she said, you know what? I didn't realize the condition it was in. I didn't realize there was so little of it. I'm just gonna give it to you for free. So she reimbursed me. She sent me the money back. So she pretty much gifted me this. And I said, okay, I'll pass that on. I'll pass on, thank you. I thought that was so sweet that a stranger would do that for me. So I said, okay, I'm going to pass that on and I'm going to do something nice for somebody. It's just so sweet. So yeah, so that's how I got my purple yarn. That was a little bit of Halloween. Now we'll get into some Christmas. So we'll do my Christmas Advent socks. Didn't they turn out beautiful? Now this is my Christmas Advent socks. The 24 Day Advent Sock Yarn by The Cozy Knitter. And I attempted to do a color a day in December. I did pretty good with that, but some days I did three colors instead because I was behind like by three days. <laughs> I'm really happy with how they turned out. I did an afterthought heel and I hated it so much. What kind of heel do you like to do? I usually do a gusset and the afterthought heel just didn't fit well on my foot, on my heel. It was just, I don't know, that afterthought heel, um, I don't know, it just didn't hug my heel. The gusset heel that I do 
fits like a glove. There's another heel that I wanna try and I don't remember the name of it, but I am so tired of socks. Like I don't have any socks on my needle. After a year of socks and then all the socks I did in December, <laughs> I'm pretty much done with making socks. I know that that will change after I've had a good break. So let's talk socks right now. Okay, so that's my Christmas striped socks. And then two years ago, I started these socks and I finally finished them. These were fun to do. Although the first time I did it, I started it, not last year, but the year before last, I started, when I got to the gusset, I started decreasing, where was it? Oh yeah, I started decreasing on the top instead. Is that where you do it? I forget, I reversed the decrease. So the top of my foot was all poochy and the bottom was all tight. It was really weird. And then I realized what I did and had to rip it out and fix it. But the worst part of these socks were weaving in all of this, all of the ends. That was brutal. Now I know why people do self-striping yarn but it turned out pretty good. This is the part where I weaved in and I didn't do anything like, I didn't do like a jogless knit or anything like that. And it's still, if you look, they're pretty good, good enough for my feet. I was happy with it. I don't know the yarn, I'm so sorry. It's a German yarn and the colors, the colors that I used are numbers. And I just, this was before I was podcasting so I didn't write any of it down. So unfortunately, I don't have that information, but it's just a Christmas red and a Christmas green. And this is just a vanilla sock pattern that I, that I did. I don't, I can't attribute the pattern to anyone because I kind of made it up myself, but I did use Pearl Together's tutorial on how to make socks. Um, go If you want to learn how to do socks, that's where I learned because she tells you why and how and um, and the formula you need to make it fit your foot. And that was very helpful for me. Okay, almost the last pair of socks. Aren't these so cute? These are for my daughter. I was dying to show them on the podcast so she can wear them. They fit her just right and I'm so scared her feet are gonna grow and then they won't fit her. I want her to get some use around the house, maybe in her socks, I don't know if they'll fit in her tennis shoes, but they might be too bulky but she's gonna love these. And this was using the yarn. This was a mystery. This was a mystery kit of My Little Pony and this is for Pinkie Pie. So I had a mini skein of the pink and then a full skein of this. And I have a ton of this left. So isn't that just pretty? I don't have really any stats on how I did it but once again, I went to Jana from Pearl Together. Let me make sure, yeah. Jana from Pearl Together, her YouTube sock tutorials, and that's how I figured out how to do it for my daughter to make it fit her foot. And then I just kept her, had her try it on and try it on. So I'm really happy with these. So now she can wear them. Yay! <laughs> okay, the last pair of socks, these. <gasps> Okay, let me explain this first. The pattern is called Worsted Cabled Magic Heel Socks, and the pattern is by Judy of the Autumn Acorn. If you haven't watched her, her podcast, you need to go watch her podcast. It's really good. And she designed these socks. I did the size large. Now, I went up a size because I have a, I have high arches, um, so let, let's talk about this pattern for a minute. She has this special magic heel. So you don't have to do a heel and gusset, you just knit, 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 and then when you get to here, she tells you the pattern to do. Um, but when you put them on, so here's, let's say, here's my heel, right? Your heel pops out there and it just stretches and it hugs your heel. So this part stretches out and it just hugs your heel. It's very cozy, it's very easy to knit, and because these are worsted weight, they knit up so quickly. I did one sock in an evening. That's how quick I was able to do these socks. 
one sock in an evening. So it took me about three nights because I had a couple of issues that I had to figure out. I, I actually, you can knit one sock and a half in an evening because I knit the sock in a medium and I realized, oh no, my heel and arch is just too deep. So I needed to go a size up. How she measures for the pattern is spot on, but if you have a high arch, you do need to go up a size. It makes it a little looser on your calf, but then that just means you can make them longer if you want for them to fit. I did not do it as long as the pattern did, which worked out good because, oh, I don't have the skein of yarn. Oh, I wish I had that. Um, but I didn't do it as long because one, if you do it as long as she did it, you need more than one skein. And I wanted to do it in one skein. Yeah, so this took one skein of yarn. Now, the yarn is by Woolen Women Fibers, and this is in her toadstool colorway, and this is the worsted. This was, I don't normally like knitting in worsted, but this yarn was so squishy, and the pattern, I love a good two, two by two rib, and I love a good cable, and there was just something about this that, ah! I did have trouble with the toe, figuring out the pattern, but Judy was very nice. I contacted her and said, help, I can't figure it out. But it's basically just a regular toe. Is Once I realized that, I was like, oh, click, I got it. The decrease is, is more like a regular toe decrease would be. Anyway, so yeah, that is the Magic Heel Socks in Worsted, and I love them so much. I know I'm gonna make more, they're very good, cozy house socks. So now that I've showed them to you, I can wear them. Okay, socks done. I do wanna do a video of the Rainbow Sock Chronicles where I show all the socks and then I go through every pattern, every yarn and colorway and have that all written out for you. So we're done with socks. And now let's talk about my daughter's sock head hat. It turned out so cute. I have pictures of her wearing it. I'll put a picture right up here. But she loved it so much. We were at the tree farm and I asked her, do you wanna wear your reindeer antlers or the hat I made you? And she goes, reindeer antlers. I go, oh, okay. And then I was like, you know what? She might need to see it. So I said, hey Faith, here's your reindeer antlers and here's your hat and her face lit up and she goes, hat, the hat. And I'm like, oh, you wanna wear the hat? Okay, <laughs> so I put it on her and it looked adorable. So this is the slouch sock head hat. Let's see what size I did. Oh, I kinda got ahead of myself here. Oh no, I didn't. So this is the sock head slouch hat by Kelly McClure. And I showed you my aqua blue one earlier that I'm working on. I've made two, I think, of these hats so far, three if you include this one, and then four on the one I'm working on. Um, I made the child size. So this is the child size. And the yarn is by Woolen Women Fibers, and it is in her potbelly colorway. And this is, I believe, her 7525 base. So the pot belly in this base shows up really bright, beautiful pink, very pot belly. <laughs> so there's that. Okay. Next, my penny gloves. Oh, my penny gloves. These, I wanted to make gloves that I didn't have to worry about that could get dirty and that were workhorse gloves. So I decided to make these penny gloves, but the yarn I used was not workhorse yarn. It, I mean, like, it's sturdy yarn. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it is too beautiful to turn into workhorse gloves. So these are more keep you warm decorative gloves because they're so pretty. So I did their the Woolen Women Fibers Christmas Advent, and they had the most beautiful colors. I used three of her colors here in the mini, the three minis, three of the minis. Now the theme was a 
Christmas, the Christmas movie of Beauty and the Beast, which I never saw. So I ended up watching it because I had the advent. Look at how pretty these are. And it rolls over thing with the thumb. It's kind of a, I didn't block these at all. So that's why this probably rolls a little bit more. So this was from their Beauty and the Beast, an Enchanted Christmas Advent. And the colors I used are Cogsworth, Fife, right in there, and then Into the Black Forest. And it has a Stellina base, so it's very sparkly. The yarn felt very luxurious. And I really love the Cogsworth. I want a full skein of Cogsworth. I want a full skein of it all. Uh, normally, I don't like yellow, but the way she did the yellow was so beautiful. So I didn't have to fade it, really. For this, there was enough um, similar that it kind of faded on its own during the change. This was more drastic, of course. So how I transitioned was when I added the new color, I knit with the new color, the old color, new color, old color, new color. And that gave this little every other stitch. And then the next one I did the old color and then the new color and then the old color and then the rest in the new color. And I think it turned out pretty good. So here's both of them together. Look at this rose by Sam's Tiny Trinkets that also came in the advent. It is so beautiful. I kept it on here because this is helping me realize that this is the right hand and I want to find some way to record that this is the right hand because I like how the top looks better on that. So when it's on my right hand, I like how it looks here better on my right hand and then on my left hand, let's see, I like how that looks better. So this is a really good pattern. The pattern is called Penny Gloves and it's by Petite Knit. I really like this pattern and I'm going to use this pattern again. I want to find some yarn that isn't as cherished <laughs> as this is and make another set. So, yeah. Last finished object. So the last finished object is this one. This pattern is the Souvenir Shawl. Isn't it beautiful? Let's talk about the good parts. <laughs> the yarn. This yarn is by Woolen Women Fibers. This was one of their mystery kits, their most recent mystery kits. And I just, I just did this one skein of yarn. I didn't do the the um, the mini skein to go with it, but it was there a long a long winter's nap. And once again, it has yellow in it, which isn't normally my favorite, but it looks so pretty in this. It gives it that warm glow. The because it was a mystery, I didn't know what it was going to look like, but the picture that they used was this hibernating squirrel so that I knew there'd be browns in it. And I love how she does her browns. And in the picture, it has this warm glow and that's where the yellow comes in. But it was just so beautiful, neutral and elegant. I don't know, it's gonna clash with, <laughs> with what I'm wearing right now, but which I'll talk about later, but. It's really beautiful. Let's talk about this pattern. If you are a new, a new lace knitter, do not get this pattern. Okay, I repeat, do not get the pattern. I have done a lot of lace. I'm pretty good at reading charts now. I'm pretty good at figuring out like troubleshooting problems. Um, this was a piece of cake here. And I was just in love with the pattern. I'm just like, I'm going to make a ton of these. And I got to the lace. 
I could not figure out what she was telling me to do. It was so confusing. So I looked up to see if anyone else had that problem and there were a few people in the comments saying they were confused. So I almost ripped out the whole thing and found a different pattern, but I chugged through, I figured it out and I, I, the light bulb finally went off. But there are a couple of parts she didn't really tell you what to do. So it, it was very confusing especially this part. I contacted her for help because it's a paid pattern, so I have to be careful because I don't want to give anything away. Um, there was a chart that you repeated twice, and in the first chart, it had yarn overs, right? So it increased stitches, and then you pop back and did the chart again. But when you did that, the, the new stitches that were added was not in the chart. And it wasn't in the previous chart that you were putting side by side. So there were about five stitches hugging. Let's see if I can find it. These, let's see. So there was about five stitches. So here was the pattern and here was the other pattern. There was about five stitches right here that were unaccounted for. And she didn't tell you whether to knit them or purl them. And it was so confusing. And when I asked her about it, I don't think she read my question because when she responded, um, she didn't answer my question. She was talking about something else. So I just responded and said, no, this is what I mean. And I ended up doing this to figure it out. So um, I was able to follow this pattern. So when I purled here, I purled here. When I knit here, I just did a plain knit there. So that's kind of how I fixed it. And then I changed this. Originally, this was just supposed to be knit like this, but I felt like it cut off the scallop and I didn't like that. So what I ended up doing was I continued the scallop by purling the pearls, knitting the knit. And I really liked how that looked because it made it look like the scallops were just kind of disappearing off the end of the shawl as opposed to just abruptly stopping. It really is a beautiful shawl. So if you're willing to give it a go and push, like try to have to figure stuff out, go for it. When I buy a pattern, I don't want to have to figure it out. That's why I buy a pattern. Um, if it was free, I'd be like, well, it's free, right? So there might be some problems. It's okay, I can work it through. But when you pay for it, you're expecting to pay for a clear, crisp, easy to read pattern with parts that are not missing. And this just unfortunately had a one little spot that was missing. I'm just thankful I had a lot of lace knitting under my belt because it's so discouraging to get this far and then be like, am I gonna be able to finish it? but it is the most beautiful pattern, I think. So I'm debating, do I wanna make it again with another skein of yarn? Now that I know how to do it, I think I could do it, you know, without the stress of it, but it's still written out confusing. I might rewrite it for myself if I do it again. That's all my whips and finished projects. So it's about block and time. So this segment is about the finished objects that I have been needing to block. When I first started knitting, I got into the habit of knitting, binding off, putting it away, knitting, binding off, putting it away. I was just too lazy, I guess, <laughs> to block my items. So I would just grow this pile of knits that I did without being blocked. And then the more I thought about it, it just felt more overwhelming. So each episode I would pull out three knits that need to be blocked and then I would show you the previous knits that I blocked. This is the last time I'm doing this segment, I believe, because I have gotten rid of all of my unblocked items. Isn't that exciting? So I can start fresh. So all of my things will be blocked at the end of this. So I will show you what I showed in episode four that I blocked, and then I will show you the last three knit objects that I need to block to finish off the segment. So that is really exciting to me. So the first thing I will start off with is what I'm wearing. This is called the Star Shower Cowl, and it is by, let me get out my notes. The pattern is by Hilary Smith Callis. Now, 
I'm not a huge fan of how she writes out, out her patterns, not because they're written out bad. They're written out fine. It's just the way I think I get a little confused. So I'm always rewriting her patterns to make it easier for me to knit and read the pattern. There's nothing the matter with her patterns at all. It's just the way my brain um, focuses and computes and all that stuff. But this is the star shower. Now, this one, I have two star showers. I believe, I don't remember. It was either this one or this one, but it was the very first hand dyed yarn that I bought ever. I bought this locally and I got hooked on it. And then not long after I found Wool and Women Fibers and I started buying her yarn. And I've been in love ever since to hand dyed yarn. So this is the Star Shower. And this yarn I got in my local yarn shop. So this, this yarn is by Farmer's Daughter. And it's in the colorway Two Gun. It was very easy to remember the name of the colorway. Because it was before I was podcasting that I made these, I didn't understand I didn't keep track of what the names were so I don't remember what this is and I didn't have the ball band for it so this is what the star shower cowl looks on like on and it can go down farther or it can go up higher and here's what it looks like off now it's really neat because the way she does this cowl as you can tell it's slanted, so when you wear it, this is the back, and it's not bulky in the back. It's It lays pretty flat, and that's because the back is shorter than the front. So the front, that's why you're able to have the drapiness, and then the black back is very sleek. And just, let's see if you can see, see? Just kind of lays, just kind of lays nicely. So it's a really neat design, really neat design. And the bottom. So normally this is, as you can see, this is straightened out because I've worn it. It's not as wavy, but the pattern's straight. But I saw in the shop when I bought this yarn, they had a sample on a mannequin with this pattern and hers was scalloped. And I asked, how did you scallop it? It looked like she added stitches and I feel like she did. Maybe she didn't but they just said she aggressively blocked it. So that's what I did. I aggressively blocked the points, but as you can see, once you wear it, it's just kind of a slight wave now. So I wouldn't, next time I wouldn't do that. It's not worth it. Or I'd add little picots if I wanted it to be scalloped. One more from last time that I showed you is this. This was my first ever finished lace project. So I did, this was when I was first starting to knit and I don't, I think I got this yarn in Carmel, no, Mendocino. Mendocino had a yarn shop and that's where I got this. And I was new to this, so I didn't realize that the changing of the color would kind of take away from the lace pattern. So as a newbie, this is pretty, <laughs> but now I'm realizing, oh, I would have picked a different pattern. Like, a, yeah, a different pattern for this yarn or a different yarn for this pattern. But I did about half of it. And then I got so frustrated because I was new to lace knitting. And this is actually a very easy lace <laughs> knit, but it was a chart and I was just learning. And I got frustrated and I hibernated it for five years, maybe more. And just recently, maybe two years ago, I finally finished it. And then now I'm finally blocking it. It's really long. So I look at it, it's a good learning experience. I don't know if it's something I would wear. Maybe it's something my daughter would like to wear, but I don't know. It's not my favorite, but it's done now. And that makes me happy. I mean, it's pretty. I just, the yarn and the pattern just aren't compatible enough, I think, in, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. <laughs> I don't know the yarn, but the pattern is the Raha, the Raha scarf, and it's from the book Knitted Lace of Estonia. 
Okay, so now we're going to talk about the three items that I need to block for the next episode. I'm really excited about this one, like a lot. It's one of my favorite colors. It's like a seafoam green. Here's the pom-pom. It's a tam or a beret, and it's so pretty. When I block it, it'll get a little bigger, but I think it's perfect, the perfect size. So we're at the end of the podcast, huh? So I can mess my hair up a little bit. So it'll get a little, it'll get bigger, of course. And I'll I do a different hairstyle. And then it's going to have... What do you think? I like it a lot. I think I'd make this pattern again. And this, I don't even remember what yarn I used, but it's just so chunky and so pretty. I'm really excited about this. I'm thinking that if I block it on a plate, it'll stretch it out just enough, and then it'll be a little bit bigger and, and it'll fit my head a lot better. This is the Irish Eyes, Irish Eyes Beret. And it's by Moth and Rust, Moth and Rust. So pretty. Okay, next is my Pay It Forward shawl. This is my Pay It Forward shawl by Nat Raid, Raid Wolf of Wolf and Fawn Knits. It still looks good, but I know when it gets blocked, it'll look even better. So it's like a you call that like an A-line or something? So it's a little bit, I, of course I have this underneath, so it's gonna be a little extra bulky, but I have a really pretty gray and a charcoal. And next episode, after I block it, I'll try to have the yarn colors and the, the type of yarn I used. I couldn't find it, but I'm gonna try and find that for you for next time. But I really love a good scallop, pico, lacy edge like that. I want to make more shawls that have this edging. I think it's so pretty. Okay. So that's the Pay It Forward shawl. And then the last thing I need to block, this is called the Chinook Scarf by Allie Green. And this is in Malabrigo yarn. I don't know the colorway, but I do remember it's Malabrigo. I made this for a, I made one of these for a friend and I loved it so much that I made one for me. I like the lace. Yeah, so I don't make a lot of purple, but oh no, I think purple looks looks okay on me. Yeah, it doesn't you can't really see the lace, but the lace will block out and it's really beautiful blocked out. I've already as I said done one of these. But here's the lace. What's nice about this is you can see from the stripes going this way that you start at one end and you just increase, 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 increase. Then you get to the center and then you just decrease, 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 decrease. That's my last one. That, my friends, are all of my projects. I feel out of practice podcasting. I shouldn't because of Vlogmas, but I don't know. There's something different sitting down and talking for an hour where I just feel like I'm boring the heck out of people. <laughs> ah, anyways, so that was episode number five. Thank you for watching and for hanging with me. And if you could and you like this video, would you please give it a thumbs up for me? That would be wonderful. And... I hope you have a good February, and I am hoping to do a podcast a lot sooner this time, maybe within the month, maybe once a month. That's my goal. Maybe sooner. We'll see. A life is very busy for me being a homeschool mom, and now that I'm carving, I, I have a lot of carving to get done for my shop. 
Um, so I probably won't be doing as much knitting as I did last month, but you know, the addiction of knitting never stops. So I will be knitting enough for a podcast. Okay. I hope you all have a great Valentine's day and I will see you in my next video.